recording started. Go ahead. All right, it's a IPFS all hands call for uh, 15th on January 2018. And uh, I'll be a moderator, uh, note taker, hopefully will add himself to the list. Yeah, Frank will be a uh, note taker. Um, should we just go uh, to the uh, agenda? David, is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so we start recording. Uh, are there any additional agenda items anyone wants to add or can we continue? All right, I think we are good. Uh, let's start with uh, RFC for IPFS cluster. Okay, thanks Lionel. So hi everybody. Up for the past month or so, Hector and I have been working on a proposal for a new feature in IPFS cluster, which we call sharding. And the quick summary is that we've been working on planning out how to get uh, files and more generally DAGs split across multiple nodes of an IPFS cluster. And at this point, we've, uh, we've finished up the RFC, I guess, okay, at this, um, the motivation behind that, just to give a little bit of background, is for number one, supporting files which are too big for a single IPFS repo, and number two, um, being able to support the basic functionality for more sophisticated fault tolerant uh, applications. So at this point, the RFC is uh, pretty like it's pretty mature, and we would like comments from other people. The two major groups that we'd like to hear back from are people with in-depth knowledge of Go IPFS, specifically people that know a lot about importers, decks, garbage collection. Um, and then the second group that we really like uh, feedback from are people with more of a user mind. So people that are like uh, interested in using IPFS for large files and potentially uh, fault tolerant applications. Um, the link is in the notes. It's, uh, it's in IPFS notes repo. It's the most recent issue, issue 278. And we'll leave it open for probably a week or two. I know a lot of you are busy this week, but uh, so I'll, maybe I'll ping you again next week. But yeah, any comments appreciated. And any questions right now, please, please ask them. All right. Um. Hmm, good question. I think the next one is mine. And we had like a small win on the browser extension front. Uh, yeah, yeah, the big one. <laughs> uh, uh, we got uh, maybe a little background. Uh, for a little background, that uh, protocols uh, that are. Uh, oh, wow. Can someone mute himself? All right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, for a little background, uh, Steve Lytle freeze for everyone, or just us? Yep. All right. Hmm, perhaps, um, well, what is the next agenda item, which is not vital? I guess there's none. Um, let's wait a, a minute to see if he, if he joins again. Otherwise, maybe we can perhaps do a demo and then come back at it. Mm -hmm. All right, shall we do a demo and then come back to the browser uh, items? Sounds good. See some thumbs up. So, Matchy, are you ready for the first demo? Um, yes. Awesome, welcome. And yeah, thank you for bringing two demos today. Uh, go ahead and pick one. <laughs> um, so I've been working on a lib P2P node trust, which is uh, basically a way to give lib P2P nodes SSL certificates. And um, 
Yeah, it enables uh, to it enables browser nodes to connect to other peer-to-peer -to -peer nodes without the need of a relay or star server, and uh, also on HTTPS websites. So I have this tiny demo page, and um, this launches a node that connects to the server, which I can also open the terminal off, and directly connect, discovers another node, and connects to that node using DNS and SSL. Um, so here, it did a discovery request, and the server gave the node the ID of the other node, and a connection was established. Mm. And so maybe I run this through also. Um, this is the client, the peer to peer node trust client. It's currently more of a hack, so it uh, does things outside of the actual client to make it work. For example, um, it has to emit a connection event on um, uh, on the listener of TCP to make the listening part work because currently um, no uh, no transports uh, no, no listeners can be added to the P2P at runtime and I'm searching for it maybe I'm just too blind to find it. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this part is a hack, and this is also a hack. Um, because, no, that's not. Um, where's the other hack? I don't know. I can find it. But um, yeah, this enables basically to remove the relay and star server and to remove. Uh, to not have to use a peer to peer circ circuit. So nodes can connect to um, other nodes without the need of a circuit server. And this works using um, Let's Encrypt wildcard certificates. Currently, I have a certificate that's not valid in here. and um, Let's Encrypt will start offering wildcard certificates from Tuesday, February 27. And that's when it could get into production if, yeah. I also don't know if this will get into production. So I've basically demoed everything I've made so far. Uh, now is time for questions. All right, thank you so much for the demo. Um, I've been following the development on Node Trust for a while. And if I understand correctly, mainly what this enables is to generate certificates on the fly so that browser nodes or basically the browser runtime doesn't complain when we try to dial to a non domain, non TLS node from an HTTPS serve domain, right? Yes, um, and it also provides DNS. But I had to change the, the part where it generates certificates because that would require um, public key infrastructure and getting approved as a certificate authority, and that's a bit expensive. That's why I'm using Let's Encrypt wildcard certificates instead. Um, I could remove the common name um, and only leave the wildcard in the certificate so nobody could spoof the website. And then it would be safe because it's uh, Zizio encrypted anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I'm running a node in my machine, uh, can I get, well, there is no relay endpoint, right? So the, um, what I get is just a certificate for my listener. Um, yeah, so first the node um, requests a certificate, then it requests a DNS update that gives uh, the uh, node the right uh, that update is the DNS, so the node also gets a domain name. Mm. Okay, so then when announcing that um, multi other to the network, the node also has to know that it can be accessible by a new multi other, which is this new DNS name, which also has a certificate attached to it. 
Um, yes, I think the code is somewhere in here. Um, for that, um, yeah, here. And so this is great for a lot of the nodes that are uh, spawned in public addresses, but you still need some kind of relay uh, feature to go and reach to nodes that are behind maps, right? Yes, and this is basically an extension, so the servers doing circuit uh, won't be overloaded, and uh, this will help the network. Sorry, I didn't understand the last part. So the um, so uh, it will not overload the network by using all the nodes as circuits, but instead it will do direct connections. That's the purpose. Of oh, that. I see, I see. Because like, if the node is on a public IP, then we can just direct connect because we went over the hump that the browser has set for us, which is it has to be at SSL slash TLS enabled endpoint that is also using NMA. But you still yes. need to be like for all of the non-public IP listening nodes. Yes, if okay. a net forwarding gets added to lib peer to peer, this could be less of a problem because most routers support UPnP, so even more nodes could get public. Interesting. Okay, so you would use something like dynamic DNS plus certificates to go. Interesting. Okay, that's yes. really cool. Can you have certificates for? Processes that are listening behind the dynamic DNS. Uh, sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I actually I'm not aware if if I have a process running on my local machine, and if I set up dynamic DNS for that process. So basically, I update the domain name every time my IP changes of my local machine because it's running on my house and not on public um, on a data center. It doesn't have a static IP. Can I set up as SSL certificate for that? Um, it can be done by modifying um, or basically adding a transport. Um, this is what I'm using here. So it creates a listener with, with the certificate and key. Mm -hmm. And this automatically is SSL enabled. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, it sounds doable. Um, I see someone is posted here, Victor, regarding Amina, why not? Yeah, like, I don't know, Victor, perhaps. Uh, I don't know any, like, any case that where that was done, so that, that is why I'm, I'm just asking, like, is it possible, is it not? Is there any but uh, setting up dynamic DNS requires a few steps to be taken, and this basically automates all the things, so it gets done immediately without any user interaction required. All right. This is pretty cool. So how easy it is to set up this today? Uh, sorry, I didn't get the last word. Um, how can users try Node Trust today? Do they have to have a custom version of Weaver to Peer? No, actually, uh, just the module needs to be plugged in at the right places. So here it, um, let us create the node. Um, somewhere here it creates the node. No, it's just, um, here it creates the discovery, then creates a new no trust node with that discovery and that's basically everything that needs to be plugged in and also the multi address needs to be added and the uh, listener has to be added but with a few changes uh, to the peer to peer so transports can be added even while the node is running this could be fully automated so one just has to do new no trust swarm and that's everything all right Pretty cool. Any other questions? Uh, I see Johnny is reaching. Yeah, I think uh, so. You're using Let's Encrypt to actually as the certificate authority. So you're actually creating a dynamic DNS, and and so 
um, it still needs to be signed by a central authority in order for it to be trusted. So, uh, and I think that's going to David's question is like, how are you getting an external node in order to validate the IP address, at least the external facing IP address to sign the um, certificate? I'm just uh, getting one wildcard certificate for the uh, for all the subdomains and then giving every node the same certificate um, because IPFS internally encrypts via, uh, with uh, secure IO, so it doesn't matter anyway. So in the beginning, it was using a certificate authority and still is using locally, but I have also added um, just uh, something that drops wildcard certificates to the nodes. And okay. those are self-signed? Um, currently, they are self-signed, but Let's Encrypt will, will start offering signed uh, wildcard certificates from uh, February 27th. OK, cool. Uh one thing you could consider doing to avoid having to update DNS uh, is to just use IP address dot domain name and let people just pick whatever domain they want or IP address they want. Um, the problem is uh, there still needs to be a certificate that's valid for that and uh, let's encrypt only supports doing the certificate change over DNS or HTTP so Oh, my point is, if you had a wildcard certificate, you just give everyone the wildcard certificate. Yes. And then you just then they can pick whatever domain they, they would just like pick their IP address domain um, and DNS would then route people to that IP address. So you have no security, but you're not trying to get security. Ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think I think I don't get it. Um, right, you're, you're actually working around security. So this is just a hack to actually to get a val did we work validly in the browser? We're just still trusting the security to be in the um, the hashing and the encryption that's intrinsic to IPFS. Um, Is that right? Yes. So it's yeah. basically just a hack. So we just we're it's just creating a certificate to create a certificate so we have something, but actually the intrinsic security of IPFS is all encrypted and should be trusted. Yes, this is exactly what I'm doing. But my point is, if you already have wildcard certificates. Uh, you don't have to have people register domains. You can just have them use their IP address dot uh, your top level domain, in which case the wildcard certificate will work for that. So that people just use the domain they want because that, that's, the, that's the domain that their um, uh, traffic is routed to. Does that make sense? Or like you make it so someone looks up uh, IP address dot domain name, they get that IP address. Um, so, sorry for, for jumping in, uh, Stephen. Um, so it feels like we, there's a lot of questions here and that we should follow up on this perhaps in another uh, medium, perhaps a GitHub issue or a GitHub repo. Um, Matchy, is there a repo where people can go to ask um, questions or issue? Yes, right in the peer-to-peer -peer node trust repo, um, questions can be asked and about the part with uh, domain names, um, they're getting uh, not an arbitrary domain name, but uh, everything that matches the wildcard could be used as a domain name, but to keep them unique, I'm hashing the peer ID so that nobody can just use uh, the domain name of another node. All right, so just for, for the sake of time, let's like uh, table that discussion to the GitHub issue and then like explore more of that asynchronously so that we have time to go through the other items on the agenda. Sounds good? Yeah. And if people want to schedule a call to discuss, to dive deeper into this stuff, you're totally welcome to, and you should put that in an issue in that repo and figure out a time that works for people. All right, so back to the agenda. Lionel, are you ready? Uh, is your connection good again? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so yeah. And let's hope it won't uh, like break again. Uh, I think I was uh, at the first one, whitelisting of uh, our uh, custom protocols. So just to quickly uh, finish this one. Uh, so far, uh, the way it worked so far was that all custom protocols had to be prefixed, uh, prefixed by Web Plus. And that um, like made things more complicated than they should. And uh, starting with Firefox 15.9, sorry, uh, we will have uh, uh, 
ability to register uh, simplified redirect based handlers for those protocols, uh, IPFS, IPNS, and uh, DWeb without prefix. And that means uh, we will also have support for those uh, protocols on uh, the Android uh, using Firefox for Android. Right now it does not work. Uh, the hack that enables us to support those protocols works only on desktop. So starting with Firefox 59, we will have a kind of native protocol. Still, the origin stuff uh, will not be solved. Like the way the origins are calculated will still work uh, like for any regular site. But still, it's a step in the right di direction. We won't have to uh, use prefixed protocols anywhere at least you know, under Firefox, right? And uh, another item uh, from my end is uh, like quick summary of uh, UX or GUI uh, efforts uh, when it comes to IPFS. Uh, it's mostly summary of uh, current developments uh, around browser extensions, but uh, we also discuss uh, and push some uh, things like uh, integration with Brow uh, Brave uh, browser, which enables us to support much more than we can in Firefox. So if anyone is interested in current status snapshot, there's a short comment I've linked uh, as a TLDR. And if anyone is interested in user experience, uh, or it's not like, uh, if someone is interested in, in user experience as uh, user, uh, experience expert or maybe you as a user uh, we would appreciate some feedback uh, for uh, two two efforts we are pushing currently one is to flesh out uh, user journey especially the initial one onboarding so if anyone has any ideas how this onboarding could be improved we already have a uh, working document. If you don't have access to that document, please request, uh, we will uh, provide you with access. Uh, what we want to do is to uh, cover as much as possible different ways we can introduce user to IPFS. And what we want to do is to create one very easy journey for that user. And we want to provide user with good examples why IPFS is useful to non-technical user uh, we think uh, we can provide some added value for that and we want to uh, design an entire journey starting with landing on the IPFS IO and uh, going to getting started instructions so that's one uh, thing uh, we would appreciate some feedback and another one is uh, we have an initial draft of IPFS brand book uh, guidelines. It's like uh, initial uh, document uh, that uh, will be used for starting conversation about how we want visual uh, site of our application. So that would be a browser extension, uh, IPFS desktop, which was called uh, IPFS station before. Uh, probably web UI will also uh, be redesigned to follow this one uh, visual uh, style guide. And this uh, brand book is a first step in that direction. We want to like establish initial, uh, the common language, common vocabulary for uh, uh, creating user interfaces. And if anything looks weird, or maybe if you want to request some uh, clarification or guidelines for specific use case in application you have in mind, it can be an imaginary application. Uh, you can provide some feedback there. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all from my end. And now I think it will be OKRs and Matt. Uh, just letting everyone know that there's, um, so the working groups are still working on their OKRs and they're gonna be firmed up this week. So they're already, they already have drafts put together and then we'll be reviewing them. So they're still subject to change but if you have comments that you'd like to put in, the, the, now is the time because OKRs get sealed about a week from now. They sort of get locked in stone and then those are the OKRs for the quarter so we can measure against them at the end of the quarter. Um, and I'll, I'll put the link to the, the spreadsheet in here.
in a moment. So that's just like a PSA for those who, who aren't already following along with the OKRs work. Okay, do we have uh, any demos left? Because I dropped out, so I don't know how much did you do. Um, yes, uh, the Uplex demo for me. All right, let's go with Uplex. So I heard that, um, I guess this was multiplex. Uh, one of the multiplexers was basically a fork of a fork of uh, another multiplexer. And so I decided to make one in like 200 lines of code. And it's not entirely finished, but it um, works and it does its thing. So I don't have much to demo because this is a multiplexer. So this is the debug output and it sends data and it works. And this uh, can also be integrated into leap peer to peer as I have already done. And it seems um, faster than other multiplexers that leap peer to peer is currently using. Do you uh, have a documentation on the protocol? Um, I haven't written any clear docs right now, but there are some comments right now. So the protocol is community protocol buffers based. And um, does it pass the stream multiplexer tests that we have? I haven't checked them yet, but uh, so far as I was implanting the API, it seemed like it should. It's also put stream native. So that's supposed to be contentious. Mm. So it sends, uh, uh, it sends packets with a state. State zero means that data will get appended to a socket. One means that it opens the socket and two means that it closes the socket. And it's really simple. Do you have a local versus remote close set up? And what? Uh, local close versus remote close. So uh, if you open a stream, right, and then close the stream, uh, the other person is able to read the data until uh, EOF. Um, yes, I have already tested this. I haven't added any tests yet because I wasn't uh, working on this very actively. I did this like <laughs> two months ago for 10 hours or you know, three hours and <laughs> that never worked again so far. Um, currently, one thing that doesn't work is when the other side closes the connection, um, but that's uh, just a few lines missing. Um, anybody, any questions? Um, Looks good. Cool stuff. All right. So I think the last uh, demo will be Lars with uh, Docs Portal. Um, Next week. <laughs> That was that was a fast uh, demo. <laughs> <laughs> but you can click the link and um, yeah. Otherwise, next week. <laughs> All right. I just co copy paste it to the next uh, notes. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so I think I think we are good. Is anything anyone wants to to add or ask or discuss? Okay, so I, th I think we can uh, fi finish this one. And uh, uh, David, uh, I'm not sure how this recording stuff works, so. 
I'll uh, upload it to the IPFS channel. So after stopping this call, it takes a little bit to render the whole video, and then I just have to have a good Wi-Fi connection to upload it to the IPFS YouTube channel. And that's all right, it. all right. In that case, uh, thank you everyone for for calling in, and uh, see you next week. Yeah. Bye. For the updates and the demos. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Bye everyone. Enjoy your week. <laughs>